I, no, I did want to ask you on, uh, you said 25% is real estate owned inside mm -hmm. the fund. So do you all offer some like a, like a depreciation benefit to your yeah. investors? How does that work? No, that's a good question. And I've had a lot of people recently ask me that right now and historically, no, because the assets we buy are so short term in nature. I mean, our mm. focus has been buying single family one to four units and fixing and flipping them because the whole you know, business model of our fund is just that cash flow. It's just constantly turning over. Um, so right now it does not offer any benefit of depreciation because we don't hold the assets long enough. Mm -hmm. um, we might, you know, sometime in the future do a syndication or create another fund where we hold assets where there's that opportunity. Because I have had a lot of people ask, you know, it's funny. You have some investors are like, I want the highest yields I can. And then you've got high net worth people that are like, no, I, you're paying me too much. My yields are too high. I need, and I'm going, well, okay, yep. that shouldn't be a tear. So again, it, it kind of goes back to the, the individual's appetite, their tax situation, their strategy. Um, right now our funds do not offer any depreciation. And I don't see that in the, the near future. If we were able to offer that, it's probably going to be in another fund environment or a syndication of some kind. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you normally see it with, you know, with, with real estate that you hold for more than yeah. a year. Uh, yeah. You're right with the short term stuff. You, it probably it would be too onerous and honestly it wouldn't be that much depreciation. Um, yeah. And, but here's the thing, markets are shifting, you know um, it's still a hot market here, but it's not what it was three months ago. I can tell you that. Um, and, you know, we have hard winters here too. So, we will, we have seen our market cool off. It's still good. I mean, we're not seeing values go down. Things are taking a little longer to sell, but it, it was also the end of summer. Everybody's taking vacations, trying to get kids back in school. I think, you know, you know, historically things start to pick up again in September. Um, but, uh, you know, if we do see values start to decline because our values here are just insane. Like we just sold our primary residence and I was like, <laughs> I couldn't even believe what we sold it for. I can't remember um, if it was Utah or Idaho, but one of the two saw the highest appreciation for real estate. It's in Idaho. It's Idaho. Mainly yeah, the Boise. Yeah, yeah, mainly Boise market, um, which is farther south than us. But Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is a resort town that everybody in the world has heard about. It was in the Wall Street Journal as a number one place to move. And we're all like, oh, my God, no. Don't tell people that. Um, but I, the point is, is that we might start to hold some rentals, you know, um, if we see markets decline and just cash flowing, because when values go up that high and then they start to drop, there's also. So what's happened here is a lot of um, a lot of uh, people that are from here originally have started selling their homes and now they have nowhere to go. Yeah. Because prices are so high, they made a ton of money, but they can't buy it. They can't replace what they sold. Now there's this huge demand for rental markets too. Yep. So, you know, um, as a fund management team, that's the neat thing is we can pivot. Like, yeah, so what we, you know, for the last seven years have fixed and flipped, and that's been a really good juice to our yield. Um, but it's not to say that we might not find that, you know, holding some rentals and cash flowing, those might be more beneficial and profitable for the fund. Um, yeah, I mean, but again, yeah. They'll, they'll always be single family, one to four units. Absolutely. Yeah. That you, you know, what markets, you know, or what asset class to be in. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, if you fix and flip and you're getting a 14 to 16% return, I mean, with a, with good levels, it, a low enough buy-in cost, good levels of rent and mm -hmm. depreciation, you can probably achieve close to that, if not hit that as well. So right. yeah, both, both are, are good strategies for sure. Thank <laughs> you.